It's super weird. Maybe I shouldn't put this on the list. Mmm. Y'all might think differently about me after you watch this. Today we're talking supernatural religious horrors. My favorite. Supernatural religious horror is my favorite. It's just so amazing to me. It's so wild, it's so crazy, and it doesn't have to be Christian mythology. It can be other religious elements as well. One of my favorite things to do is to binge watch television series or shows. It should be series. But since everyone calls them shows, I'm going to call them shows. Horror shows are my favorite. So I thought I would make a list of awesome horror shows that you could watch. Not as easy as you might have thought because when I started listing all of these shows, I had a ton, a ton. So I tried to group them by different things like, oh, I don't know, like sci-fi, maybe crime, because yes, crime can still be horror, like Hannibal. I might not do them right in succession, probably, you know, get them done in the next couple of months. I don't want it to be all television shows. Don't be alarmed if your favorite series is not on this list. I'd still love to know what your favorite horror series is, so you can put that in the comments below, but this is just one list of several, just one. So don't fret. With as difficult as this list was to create, I didn't even bother putting this first list into any particular order. I am not gonna spoil any of these shows, so I'm gonna give quite a bit of information, but I'm not gonna ruin them for you. So I hope that you will watch them yourself and I will tell you where you can stream all of these shows right now. I am most likely going to mispronounce some of these names because there's a lot of names and some of them are foreign. So I'm probably gonna mess that up. I apologize in advance. Penny Dreadful. Penny Dreadful ran for three seasons from 2014 to 2016 with 27 episodes. It was created by John Logan. It stars Ava Green, Josh Harnett, and Rory Kinner. Penny Dreadful is one of my favorites for sure. <laughs> I know these are in no particular order, but it is definitely one of my favorites. It is a beautiful, gothic horror, supernatural, Amazing show. It is set in London during the 1800s. And Ethan, played by Josh Harnett, is an American gunslinger. Like he's in those Wild West shows, like pew, 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 where they do trick shots and stuff. It's actually really super cool. He is hired by Malcolm Murray and Vanessa Ives to help rescue his daughter Mina from a creature. Now we don't know what or who this creature is, but you do find out at a point in the series. Vanessa is really the central character of the show. She is a medium, so she is easily possessed by spirits, which makes it very cool. But it also makes her a haunted and hunted woman. Vanessa Ives is a Catholic woman and she is desperately trying to turn to God to save her from what she feels has been haunting her throughout her life. The series combines elements of Frankenstein, the picture of Dorian Gray, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and of course there are vampires a la Dracula. You know I love my vamps. This series is so gorgeous. The set design, it's breathtaking. Honestly, it's breathtaking at points. The costumes are just wonderful. I cannot tell you how much I love Ava Green in this role and how fantastic she is in this series. There is an amazing seance scene and obviously Vanessa is central and key to it. I love that there are vampires and werewolves and all sorts and manner of creature, like Frankenstein's creature, who is such a beautiful character in this series. I really love Reeve Carney, Dorian Gray. I am very lucky because I had the privilege of meeting him one Halloween. This was like several years ago. He's very kind and very wonderful and makes a beautiful Dorian Gray. 
There are some gory effects. I love gothic horror and gothic romance, Victorian horror. I mean, it, it really touches on all of the elements of sexiest entertainment. I recommend Penny Dreadful to practically everybody. I know that everyone is not into horror, but I think this is so visually stunning and striking and it does end. There is an ending to the series, which is so depressing because I would have loved for this to go on for Ever. Whether you like the ending or not, I feel like the ending was very appropriate for the series and for the show. Penny Dreadful is on Showtime. This is a guilty pleasure of mine. Hemlock Grove. Hemlock Grove ran for three seasons from 2013 to 2015 with 33 episodes. It is based on the book of the same name by Brian McGreevy. It stars Famke Jensen, Bill Skarsgård, and Landon Liborian. Hemlock Grove is a supernatural series that is set in Hemlock Grove, a fictional town in Pennsylvania. And it centers around two young adults, Peter, a Romani, and Roman, a member of the wealthiest family in town who own and run the Godfrey Institute for Biomedical Technologies and Hemlock Acres Hospital, since that's where all the money is. There was a mill in town at one point that it has been or was closed down, and now there's a big disparity between the wealthiest and the poorest in the town, which creates, you know, some conflict. There have been some murders, and unfortunately, Peter is the prime suspect. He and Roman set out to solve the mystery of who done it. Also, people suspect that Peter is a werewolf, and he is, in fact, <laughs> he is a werewolf. <laughs> That's not really giving much away because you find out rather quickly. It does have werewolves, like I mentioned, of course, a weird cult, and vampires. But the vampires in this are actually Upir, and they're born, not made, and they have slightly different powers and abilities and kind of the way they look and stuff. It's pretty cool. If you're gonna watch Hemlock Grove, don't take it too seriously. If you do take it seriously, you're not gonna enjoy it. Like I said, this is a guilty pleasure, which means yeah, it's probably not the best. It's a bit cheesy at points. The story just like completely goes off the rails. Like it's, it gets crazy. It's pretty crazy. It does feel like a soap opera. I never knew what was gonna happen or what was happening really. I still don't know if I really know what was happening within it all. The effects are questionable at points. I would say the acting is very good. I enjoyed all of the actors. There's definitely religious themes with all different types of religion actually. With the Catholic, werewolf, hunter society, you know, the psychics, divination and witchcraft. There's themes throughout. It's not great, but it is great to me. I enjoyed it because it was weird and offbeat. It was made for Netflix, but you can now watch Hemlock Grove on Tubi. Brand new cherry flavor. Mm. Brand New Cherry Flavor is a limited series of only eight episodes and it was on in 2021. Created by Nick and Tosca, it stars Rosa Salazar, Katherine Keener, and Eric Lang. Once again, we have a supernatural horror. This one is set in the 90s. Yeah, they went with the 90s instead of the 80s, which is pretty cool. It centers around Lisa, a filmmaker, who arrives in LA with a dream to direct a feature film. Now, Lisa has only directed a short film, one short film, in fact. However, the short film that she has directed is very compelling and seems to have a mystical and magical aura to it. And the production behind it is actually quite tragic. She grabs the attention of a producer. The producer agrees to help her out. And yet, after Lisa rejects him, of course, he betrays her. So Lisa decides to seek out a witch to help her exact revenge against the producer. She does get her wish, and her and the producer have quite a war. This series is a trip. It's like, it's totally trippy. There is some weird, wild, wacky stuff that happens. There is a lot of vomiting of 
stuff, I'm not gonna say what, there is, without a doubt, the weirdest, craziest sex scene that I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, maybe not. I mean, I've seen, I've seen some, some weird stuff. I mean, there's gross, and then there's disturbing, and then there's weird. This is definitely weird. Maybe it is kind of gross, but it's not disturbing because it's all consensual. It's just odd. It's very odd. The acting is wonderful, superb. In fact, I found it excellent. The story is wild and off the wall, but I, I found myself riveted the entire series. I am really sad that there's only one season of this. I would love to see more, and they left it open at the end. They do wrap up what is happening. So you do have an end. I think that if you want something that is just really off the wall and looking for some weird horror, which apparently a lot of you are, <laughs> then this is probably the show for you. Brand new cherry flavor is on Netflix. Next, we have another beautifully atmospheric show with Carnival. Carnival ran for two seasons from 2003 to 2005 with 24 episodes. It was created by Daniel Nauf. It stars Clancy Brown, ooh, Nick Stahl, and Clea Duvall. Carnival is set in the United States during the Great Depression in the 1930s. While we have the Dust Bowl, what a great time in American history, isn't it? It centers around two characters, a young man with strange healing powers named Ben, that's Nick Stahl, and a preacher, Brother Justin, Clancy Brown. Oh my God, I love Clancy Brown. <laughs> so you know, love. Who lives with his sister, Iris. And he discovers that he has abilities of his own. The two share prophetic dreams that actually starts to draw them to one another not necessarily in a good way. Basically, this show says like one of them is good and one of them is dark. I guess you're supposed to wonder, but really you don't wonder, you know exactly like who is light and who is dark. It centers around those two. However, there is also a girl named Sophie. She seems close to Ben's age, who is very central to the series as well. Ben joins a traveling carnival after his mother passes away. And there he discovers that he has connections with the people, and especially the people that run the carnival. This show is absolutely beautiful. It is also so well done with its costuming and its set design. What's odd is a lot of it is the dust bowl, <laughs> so it's a lot of dust, but it's done so well, and the costuming is amazing. The carnival part of the show is done wonderfully. This show does such an amazing job with its character development, and not just from the central or main characters. It's really everyone. Oh, also, Adrian Barbeau has a role in this as well, and who doesn't love Adrian Barbeau? I was super sad when this got canceled. They did leave it open for another season, but no, this has been a long time and I highly doubt that we will see any more. Every few years I rewatch it and I still find it just as good as I did when I watched it the first time, even though I already know what's gonna happen. And if you want to watch Carnival, it is on Max. Next we have one of the most amazing time travel series I have ever watched, Dark. Dark ran for three seasons from 2017 to 2020. It was co-created by Baron Bo Odar and Jante Frise. Yikes. Dark is a German subtitled series. I do also believe that they have it in a dubbed version. So if you can't stand subtitles, you can still watch the dub version, but I think the subtitles is better, so you get the full effect of the actors. And I highly recommend you get over those subtitles because it's gonna open your world to a whole new idea of horror. Dark begins with the missing child in a small town, but the story is so much bigger than that. So, so much bigger. It's hard to actually talk about Dark because the story is so big and complex, and I don't want to give anything away, but really talking about it past that is just not even worth 
it because each piece is linked. The tagline of the series is everything is connected and everything really is connected. And so it all just kind of fits together. And I mentioned it is about time travel. That is not giving anything away. You pretty much realize that they have found a wormhole and they are time traveling. It really centers around four families and those four families and how they're connected and how they are connected through multiple timelines. Like it's crazy. What gets really crazy and wild is how you start to realize people are related to one another based on this time travel and it's super interesting. And it does end. It's wonderful. It actually wraps up really well. It's definitely one that you need to devote your time to. You need to sit down, you need to watch it, you need to focus on it because there is so much going on and there's so much that's connected. There's no way that you're gonna be able to keep these connections in your head because there's so many different little variations. It sounds exhausting and it is in a way, but it's not, it's worth it. It definitely has a ton of religious elements to it. Christianity and a Bible are actually a very heavy influence in the series, the Triketa, the symbolism, the 33 years, alpha and omega, creation, the apocalypse, paradise and hell, light and dark, good and evil, is there very evidently if you are looking for it. You know, I really liked 12 Monkeys, but I think that the story here is better. So I really hope you do catch Dark on Netflix. We have a different sort of religion, and that is the wonderful world of witchcraft, my dears. Salem. Salem ran for three seasons from 2014 to 2017. It was created by Brandon Braga and Adam Simon. It stars Janet Montgomery, Shane West, and Seth Gable. Salem is a supernatural horror. Ooh. Set in Salem. Ah! During the witch trials. Ooh. The story centers around Mary Sibley, who is pregnant by her lover, John Alden. She believes that he was killed, and so Mary decides to give up her child to the devil in order to avoid puritanical persecution, where they would basically, you know, put her in the stockades and brand her. Yeah, it's pretty horrible. Believing that he has passed away or died, she decides to marry the wealthiest, most influential man in town. He's like this old man, and she does. Oh yeah, and she also wants to, you know, summon Satan. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. <laughs> Turns out, John isn't dead. What a shock, right? And he comes back to Salem. And of course, this puts a damper on her plans. It is so beautifully atmospheric. So the costumes are amazing. And I actually have some of the wardrobe from the series few pieces, just a couple, and I love it. It's so good. I wear it, you know, for costumes for like a vampire. So I've got this burgundy dress. One of them was screen worn and this cape that was amazing. It was shot so well. They have some amazingly gory and crazy scenes, some crazy witchcraft elements to it. The characters and the acting is so, so good. Lucy Lawless actually comes into the series at a point and she's wonderful and fabulous and I really dug her. The character Cotton Mathers is just epically crazy. I really enjoyed the series. I definitely recommend it. And if you want to see Salem, you can catch it on Hulu. This one's a really spooky good time. We have Marianne. Marianne ran one season in 2020 with only eight episodes. It was created by Samuel Bowden. It stars Victory Dubois, Lucy Bougena, and Tiffane Davino. It is French and it is subtitled. If you don't like it, I am so sorry, but this is so good. You're really gonna miss out. I watched it with the subtitles and I have heard that the English dubbing is not great and can take away from the show. So I advise you to watch it with the subtitles. The story centers around Emma, who is a best-selling author, and she writes books about a witch named Marianne. After quote unquote killing off her central character in the books, weird and bad things start to happen around her. Turns out that Marianne is based on nightmares that Emma had as a child, and she might also be real. 
What transpires is basically, in order to keep Marianne at bay, Emma needs to keep writing her books. The lady who plays the embodiment of Marianne, so spooky. She just gives good crazy eyes, like what? Oof. Marianne is clearly a demon. So it is actually a possession story. Marianne does in fact include a priest who is a very central character to the series. I know that at points it might sometimes get maybe a little bit over the top. I still found it very scary and quite compelling and I really enjoyed the characters. It's only eight episodes, so it's a quick watch. If you would like to check out Marianne, it is on Netflix. Next we have Diablero. Diablero ran for two seasons from 2018 to 2020 with 14 episodes. It is based on the book El Diablo Mi Obligo by Francisco Hagenbeck. It stars Horacio Garcia Rojas, Christopher Von Uckerman, and Giselle Curry. Diablero is a series from Mexico, so it is subtitled. I highly recommend watching these subtitles if it is dubbed because I feel like you really get the uh, true nature of the story that way. It is a supernatural horror with obviously religious elements because it's demon hunting, yay. It focuses on the legendary demon hunter, Elvis, and his group of demon hunters. I laugh because this show is funny. Like, it's very funny. I laughed out loud several times throughout the series. And also a priest. Father Ramiro, who lived a normal life before he entered the priesthood, and he seeks Elvis's help in finding a missing girl who has been taken by the demons, of course. Angels have abandoned Mexico City, and demons have taken over. Elvis does mention that the demons have been getting bolder and more aggressive with their attacks. So something is changing in the seedy underworld of the demons. So it kind of feels like a Constantine type series or show in that way, you know, and it does have comedic elements. So if you like Constantine, you'll probably like this one. Now Elvis does not kill the demons, but instead he traps them. And then he takes them and sells them on the black market because he's in debt. So, I don't know why that's funny, but I do think it's kind of funny. He agrees to help the priest because he thinks that this will be a big payday for him. I love that this takes place in such a heavy Catholic area because, you know, I like the religious aspect of that. There is some really wonderful acting in this. And while it, it is funny, it's it actually is campy at points, the chemistry between all of the actors is just wonderful. I think that's what makes this series so great. And Elvis is so funny and he wears this like ponytail and it's like, it's like it comes off of his head. I don't know why it's funny. Is it worse than the man bun? Hmm. I don't know. The cinematography in this is excellent. There are some wonderful, beautiful kinetic shots as well. It's it's set in a really cool universe. I really enjoyed this series. I was sad that it was only two seasons and I feel like there was a lot more that they could have done. There's some really cool effects. I liked the way that the demons look. I, there's a lot to this that's very, very, very good. And if you can get past the subtitles, I think you'll enjoy it too. If you are interested in checking out Diablero, it is on Netflix. Yeah. This one has a big name attached to it though. It's The Exorcist. The Exorcist ran for two seasons from 2016 to 2017 with 20 episodes. Mm. It is a supernatural horror show created by Jeremy Slater and based on the novel, of course, The Exorcist, written by William Peter Blatty. Stars Ben Daniels, Alfonso Herrera, and Gina Davis. This is a direct sequel to the 1973 Exorcist film. So it doesn't pay attention to any of the other stuff that came after that. Maybe that's why this is so good. The two seasons are kind of split, but they both focus around two priests, Father Thomas Ortega and Father Marcus Keene. And they're really opposites, but they are both struggling 
preach. They both have, you know, their vices, their things that they have to be good about. The first season focuses on the Rance family. The Rance family is husband and wife and two beautiful daughters. The wife believes that something is going on with one of her daughters and is deeply afraid that her daughter could be possessed. So she enlists the help of Father Tomas. What would seem as a typical exorcism is anything but. Typically with an exorcism film, you know, everything is pretty contained. This is much larger, much bigger. The second season actually really opens itself. They have a big, huge plan and it involves like a Vatican conspiracy. So the story gets super big. It's super wild, it's super crazy, it's super fun. And it's far better than the most recent exorcist film. The acting is phenomenal. I mean, you have Gina Davis, come on. You can watch the series Guess what? Oh, where is it? Tubi. Mm hmm. Wonderful Tubi. Have you seen any or all of these shows? What is your favorite horror show? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I really do hope that you have the most amazing day, my spooky darlings. I want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much to my Patreon members. Chris Mizzictino, Jimmy Horror, Janie McLaren, Jose Reyes, Phil Smith, Jim Kemmerling, and Deal Demon. Thank you so much for supporting me and supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. You guys are my beautiful, wonderful, spooky darlings. And series is a zero plural, if I remember correctly. So series is actually the plural version of series. It's kind of confusing. English can be confusing sometimes, you know? I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. I'm trying my best. <laughs>